Hello, this is Brent Willett. Today we're going to take a look at a, a cool paint splatter animation over a 3D logo uh, that we're going to put together in uh, Zaxworks Pro Animator using Rampant Design Tools Studio Paint. One day I was at the Rampant website and they have this uh, example reel playing and one of their animations caught my eye. It was this uh, this one right here with the, uh, the Rampant logo with the paint splatters falling on it. Sean Mullen put this together in After Effects using a little bit different method than what we're going to do here, but today I want to show how we can use uh, Zaxworks Pro Animator and, of course, Rampant Studio Paint to put this together pretty quickly. So we're going to start with a new composition. We'll start with the paint. We'll call this Paint. And I've already picked out several examples of uh, paint splatters that I liked. If I go ahead in the timeline a little bit we can see that these are all black and white mats. Another thing I want to point out, if I zoom out, you can see that these are all 4K, so they're very large in my in my HD comp here, which is great because it gives me a lot of room to be able to uh, move things around or scale things up or down if I need to. And one thing I want to do is uh, make these all fit. So if I do Command Option F make them all fit. Now we're going to apply some effects to them. Do channel invert and then we're going to do a nice little effect called null unmult. It's a free effect from Red Giant that's very handy in cases like this especially with a black and white map because what it does is it takes out the black and leaves you with what's left as an alpha channel. There aren't any settings to it, it just does what it does but it's a, it can be incredibly handy especially if you want a case like this with the alpha channel and no background to it at all. And we'll also go to effect generate fill to fill this with a color. Now let's move some of these around a little bit and maybe change the colors here. This top one let's make it blue leave this second one red. This one let's make it green And then we'll copy this fill and paste it into this layer so it would make both of those green. In Sean's example, he had a big section that was a big splatter of red. So let's go back to this red and duplicate it. But you know what? Before I duplicate it, let's help ourselves out a little bit. Let's change the color of the layer to be the color of our paint splatter. So in this case, this one's red. This top one's blue. and these bottom two are both green. So now when I go to duplicate this layer and we end up having a whole bunch of them, I'll be very be able to very easily at a glance see that uh, which layers are which color which is going to help us out a little bit if we need to go back to it for whatever reason. So we'll just kind of rotate some of these, move them around, scale them up a little bit. Maybe I'll duplicate this blue one too move it over here, rotate it, Maybe move this one in a little bit closer. So you see that we have them coming on here. Let's uh, kind of shift some of these down a little bit, just stagger these layers a little bit so they're not all coming on at exactly the same time. And we can do a quick render test just to see the paint splatters on here. And another great thing about all these Rampant products is they're all real. These were shot in camera, actual paint splatters. They weren't created in After Effects or, or any other program. They were actually paint splatters, which gives it a nice organic feel. All right, so we have that. Let's start another composition here, a new comp. We'll call this one Rampant Logo. And we'll do New Solid. We'll also call this Ramp It Logo. And we'll pick Effect, Zaxworks, and Pro Animator. It's off the bottom of the screen here, but there it is. We'll import an Illustrator file of the Ramp It Logo. Open by Layers. There's our logo. Uh, before we go any further, let's grab our Paint Comp here and bring it down into this comp as a layer. And we'll go ahead a little bit just to see that we have it on here. But then we're going to turn off, turn it off because we don't need to see it. We just need to be able to assign it as a layer map to our Pro Animator. 
effect. So we'll twirl down the layer maps and we'll go over here and choose the paint layer. Now go back up here and we can go into our setup window. Now the first thing we can do is make a new material and we'll make this white. And with them all highlighted we can just drag this on top of this black one in the dock and it'll make them all white. And we'll add our paint splatters in just a minute but first I want to get my logo set up. I'm going to make a kind of a thick logo change the bevel to small front which will make the bevel smaller on the front but it also makes the back flat which is very handy for us putting it on a table or floor or whatever we want to call this. We'll add a new track, a new primitive, plain back wall. Let's scale this up. And you know what? In our in Sean's example, the uh, animation started off very far in the distance and then zoomed forward very quickly. So let's make this plane really big. Let's say like 8,000. So now we have a lot of a lot of room here. Let's add some lights. So we'll go to lighting rigs and double click on this default lighting rig, which is just a basic key fill and backlight kind of setup. If we click on this first light, I want to turn on shadow casting, put it to 36 rays to get a higher quality, make a, make it a pretty soft shadow, and bring down the darkness a little bit. If I twirl down this info, I can move the light around. Move it so it's a little more in front, but pointing downwards. And I want to move my background plane back a little bit so it's right behind the logo. Let's do a quick RAM pre uh, a quick render test here to see how our shadow looks. Looks pretty good. And I also wanted to go to lighting globals and turn on ambient occlusion. Let's do another render test. Ambient occlusion adds dark shading to uh, the point where objects meet. So you see in this case we get a little bit of a dark shadow here along the edges where it's on the edge of the table. Now we'll go back to our material editor and we can add the paint splotches. Let's uh, if we click on this plus sign on the color shader here we get some more options and we can go down here and choose layer map one and there's our paint. We also have to add this material to the uh, background plane. Now you see the background plane is really huge so what it what it does by default is make everything UV proportional. So we got giant splatters on our background and we want to be able to map this across everything but not have it be ridiculously huge like this. And there's a really cool way to do this. Uh, if we can have this camera a little bit of an angle here and get our rampant logo kind of in the middle. If we go down to our mapping options here First, let's highlight all of our, our layers. We'll go to our mapping options and go down to camera view. It'll ask if we want to spread the mapping across all the selected objects. Click yes. And there it did that. It, it used what the camera sees here to map our paint splotches on across all the objects. Do a quick render test. We can kind of see what this looks like. And I like this camera view for a couple of reasons. One, because it, um, we're able to map it a, on this large plane, but also I, I like the random feel it gives to it because we have some paint splotches that are kind of here on the top and they go bend around the edge and we have just some random little splotches, you know, random little spots here, here and there. I think it's a nice, helps with the organic look of the paint splotches to begin with. Uh, one thing we're going to see we're going to animate this with the After Effects camera, but if we zoom out a little bit, we see that it tiled the background, and we don't want to have all these extra paint splotches on this 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 background layer. But that's easy enough to fix, as we can do. Uh, can leave these all still highlighted. We go down to this tiling and do no tiling, and there it takes it away. So all we have is just what was in the uh, original camera view. So we can click OK. And there it is. Now let's animate using a, an After Effects camera. So let's do Layer, New, Camera. 
on this uh, rampant logo layer to speed things up a little bit let's change this to draft mode which will take away our shadow and our detail but it, we're going to be able to move it or move it around much more quickly and also on this rampant logo layer we need to uh, click use comp camera and then we can go to our camera and twirl down to the transform make a keyframe here and grab our camera tool and we'll start off with our logo far in the distance if I hit C repeatedly I can change cycle through the uh, camera options alright now let's go about 10 frames forward if I do shift command arrow to the right shift command right arrow I will go forward 10 frames we will zoom this forward and tilt it position it here maybe a little bit more forward and now let's go ahead to like let's say three seconds and we'll just do a, a little bit of a rotation on this to make the logo a little more f come forward a little more and let's do a quick RAM preview and see what this looks like so you can see it zooms forward but then it keeps zooming forward a little bit before it finally settles and that's actually not quite the look that I want the camera move is not doing exactly what I want it to do but I can fix that pretty easily if we go into a, one of the other views here like say the left view and zoom over here we can see here's our camera path it's got this little curve to it but we can fix that by going up here to the uh, convert vertex tool and just clicking on these keyframes to straighten them out now if we go back to our active camera and do another RAM preview we'll see that it zooms forward and then just does its slow tilt as the paint's coming on now one thing I think I want to have that paint come on just a little bit sooner so I can very easily go to this paint layer that is our texture map and move a little bit forward in the timeline until right with the point where the paint starts coming on so we have a pretty cool paint splatter effect on a 3D logo uh, using Zaxworks Pro Animator and the Rampant Design Tools Studio Paint. Cool thing is you can mix and match any of the Studio Paint effects to get some different looks. You can uh, put in different 3D objects in the Pro Animator layer. You can have different logos, you could have text, you could have anything that you wanted with paint splattering all over it. And it's pretty easy to set up and it looks really cool. Thanks for watching.